everyone, Chris here. We're going to take a look at uh, Moog 1 firmware update 1.0.3. Actually, just a few features of it. Uh, the PDF is available online as to everything that's going on with this update. And so I'm taking a look at the release notes and we're looking at a few of the new features and improvements. And uh, might talk a little bit about the bug fixes, but you can read this on your own, so I don't think it really needs to be gone, gone over in too much depth. Um, first thing we're going to look at, I've got an init patch up here. I've already loaded the firmware update, create a new user space. Uh, before I did that, I saved all my presets and now have loaded into this new uh, user space. And let's take a look here. So new features and improvements. Number one, most requested feature, stereo spread, parameter, percent, added to the VCA more page. So let's take a look. So first of all, the init patch. And it's glorious mono. Okay. So when we come here, we have in the VCA more page, uh, all the user controls that we had before, but we scroll down one more and there's a synth spread. I'm going to put it on an arpeggiator here. Hold. Okay, that's good enough. And let's start playing with this. So you can hear it trying to starting to spread around per per voice there. So one problem here. This has been repeatedly happening. I've only been playing this for about 10 minutes before I started the video. Been this weird distorted feedback kind of thing going on. Lasts for between 15 and 30 seconds and goes away on its own. But also I've noticed some of that little kind of uh, distorted artifact kind of sound uh, and just playing it regularly. Unfortunately, this really needs to be fixed is, um, you know, if you're recording a track and this thing randomly comes in, uh, of course, I'm sure they'll get right on that. But uh, here's the synth spread again at 100%. And you heard the voices, they move, uh, you know, from out to in and repeat the process. So I'm not touching anything right now, I'm just letting the arpeggiator go, and you can hear the pattern of it. Okay. All right, so that's a synth spread. We're going to take it down to zero. And the next thing we want to take a look at is in the effect menu, there is this new stereo width parameter. So let's take it down to zero. Oops, get the effects on there. So just a mono init patch. Turning on the hall on the master effects, mono reverb. As we increase this parameter, we're going to hear it slowly begin to widen in the stereo field. When we get to 100%, that is a stock, uh, let's see what it says here. The, this. Okay, stereo width parameter for the digital effects located on the master effect type page. That's what we're looking at right now. This is a mid-side processing algorithm which provides additional stereo sweetening for the effects output. 
Um, stereo width allows the stereo image of the effects signal to be adjusted from zero, which is mono, to 200% super stereo. 100% gives the original unprocessed stereo image, and that's default. This process is applied at the very end of the digital effects chain, independent of which master effect type is selected, and it affects both the main and sub stereo outputs. So just in the effects section, now let's take it up to like a really wide super stereo here. And if we have some more fun, let's take this to 100%. And we'll take this to 100% also. So the uh, VCA panning, uh, or you know, voice panning and spread, I think is what they call it. And now the stereo width are both at 100%. You can hear things changing around in the stereo field independent from one another. Uh, let's turn the arpeggiator on. There's a stereo uh, oscillator with a mono reverb. And 100% on both. Okay, now let's try it with, so that's with reverb. Let's take it up to chorus, and again, we're on the master effects. Let's change this. So it already sounds better. Let me try messing with the VCA level to see if we can mix it. Okay, so this is totally wet for the effect and VCA is totally down. Pulling the VCA up. So that's already more useful. I'm going to take the master effects off and we're going to go to the synth effects because part of the bug fix is say, improved gain matching wet versus dry versus bypassed. I was still not really told what that duh or what the what the levels are but supposedly better. Fixed delay time offset bug in the dual course and ensemble effects. Fix known digital dry versus analog dry effect signal bugs. Yeah, we were waiting for that. Uh, fix the phase inversion on master effect signal path. Affected main and headphone outputs, not subs or inserts. And a vocoder has been made to work better. I don't have a mic set up right now. Uh, but Let's see, there's a delay. So we're on just the synth effect here. First, let me turn it off and get back to where We've got some stereo spread still happening, 75%. And we're going to go to the synth effect and turn it on. Go to type and let's take it to chorus here. And just make this something a little more useful. Uh, 
on that quite yet. So VCA is at full. That's totally dry. So the synth effect is still not stereo. Hopefully that will be coming soon because that would really make things a lot more useful uh, to be able to have stereo chorus per synth. But uh, let's see here. The phaser one was the phaser was really awkwardly off, but let's check it out. Well, I just pulled the rate up a little bit there so we can hear how it sounds better. Now let's adjust. Uh, VCA is up all the way. Uh, if we turn it down. So this uh, synth effect is pre-VCA. And let's turn the mix all the way up. Okay, so at 50%, that's not that's not uh, full wet and full dry. This at 100% seems to be full dry and full wet, and this mix is uh, really like an effect level. Because there's the fullest part of the effect, and let's see how much the gain staging has been affected. So I'm gonna bypass it. That's still a little bit shy, but let's pull up the gain on the effect. It's better. The gain for the entire effect, though, is still too low versus bypass. So that you know, the, the phaser effect creates a notch that it moves around, or notches. And that's always going to take the level down, less depending on how you, uh, like in the analog, I could build a phase 90, and you can adjust the gain of the overall unit, both wet and dry. I mean, if you change the circuit. Um, there shouldn't be any reason that, especially in the digital world, that the effect turned on versus bypass shouldn't be the same level. Now, here's the thing, if you turn down the mix, you know, the volume is similar, even up to 50%, but the effect if you want the full richness of the phaser, as you normally would with a pedal, like a small stone or phase 90, you would want the, this mix all the way up, which would be equal dry, equal wet. That sounds really rich, sounds good. But unfortunately, bypass volume is not being matched. Bypassed, engaged. So this would be dependent on uh, where you have the control set, but if we're already at a gain 100%, uh, we should have more room. I mean, I'd prefer to hear like, you know, s them give a value of say, you know, 75% is unity with the with the bypass signal, and then you have a little room if you want to use it to boost the effect. I, I prefer to have everything gain stage to the same. But that is uh, still a bit of a problem for me. I would not, I'd rather it, there's no reason it shouldn't just be the same level. And... Um, Let's see here. Imagine everything else should be working a bit better too now that they fix the. Uh... I don't remember if this goes into stereo. Yeah, okay, so that's stereo from the synth effect.
again, when it's engaged, the volume is still too low. Uh, I hope they get this fixed, because we've got the gain at 100%. When it, the effect is on, it's lower volume than when it's bypassed. Uh, I'm going to report that and hope that gets fixed. So, anyways, let's see here. What else is going on with this? Uh, let's see. Known issues. A lot of clock stuff that still needs to be fixed. And I've heard that the Windows implementation hasn't been fixed yet. But um, I was able to use and record MIDI with a Mac, so... Of course, uh, the Apple keyboard uh, doesn't work plugged into uh, the Moog One. I have like a 10-year-old like corded USB Apple, like what you'd use with like an iMac or something. And I try to get it so I could type in names, but it doesn't work with the with the Apple keyboards. And I don't have a Microsoft keyboard to to try that, but I've heard that works. And don't really want to buy one. So hopefully we get the Apple. Um, so well, anyways, um, let's see how it goes. Um, you know, that big problem is that noise, that distorted kind of glitchy noise that comes in and out every once in a while uh, needs to be fixed. And I hope they can get the effects levels, uh, the volume of the synth effect uh, higher uh, because it's not reaching unity gain with a bypass signal. And really, it should be a little range to go past it if you need to do that in a performance. So... Um, happy about the update. Been waiting for this. A lot of things were fixed that we wanted to get fixed. And we'll just look forward to uh, Moog working on it. And let's, let's see here. Let's oh, there it goes. That's the glitch. Probably wrong word for it. This is a lot of analog. But something in a digital part of it's causing the uh, signal to go all right so hopefully we'll get another update really soon thanks for watching guys and uh we'll see you next time